Well, what do you know? YouTubers again. Hello, guys, and welcome to PW. I have been doing YouTube videos now for just under a year. At the exact year mark, I will announce some amazing news for you guys that I think my viewers are going to want to hear. I'm just going to give you a hint. I'm not going to give it away yet, but I'm going to say that a couple of audio video companies have contacted me. Um, let's just say in lieu of doing the YouTube videos, essentially, and um, have asked some things of me. And um, well, that's pretty much all I'm going to say at this point. Um, I'm not going to say which companies. I'm not going to say asked to do what. I'm not going to say that they, you know, offered me a plane ticket to fly down to California or uh, their headquarters and uh, asked me to meet with them. But um, I will announce the news at some point here at the uh, one year mark exactly of doing my YouTube videos. So we're in October now. We're late. We're almost to Halloween. Um, I'm going to have some interesting stuff for Halloween as well, guys. So I'll have lots of cool stuff coming. Um, and uh, keep in mind, um, I'm still working on the theater build, the dedicated home theater. It's going to take a long time um, and longer than I expected, but we'll get there someday. So I wanted to give uh, my viewers um, a small update on that and let you know that while I'm not documenting things and, and, and posting them, so to speak, um, I am documenting for myself, uh, so I want to kind of give you the surprise when it's all finished and done, but uh, that could be a while off. But um, as far as now goes, I have unhooked my SR7010 here, my Marantz AV receiver, and what I'm going to do for you guys is set that up. Um, and while setting up a surround sound receiver isn't easy, um, it's sure not difficult. And I could probably do it in under five minutes here, but the real work comes to the setting the other components up. And what I mean by other components, I mean speakers, uh, speaker stands, speaker mounts, uh, mounting the speakers, um, setting the other equipment up, Blu-ray players, power amplifiers, AC line conditioners, um, you know, surge protectors, cable boxes, game consoles, finding your center channel placement, locating your reflection points, um, picking out diffusers or absorber panels. There's so many different aspects of the surround sound and building a home theater that, that come into play uh, and that are important. But one of the things I want to point out here, and I'm not going to run through this in this video because it would just take too long, um, is cabling. Cabling is something that you need to pay uh, close attention to when building a home theater of any sort, whether it be in a bedroom and you just want a minimalistic setup with just a, a small slimline AV receiver type, um, a 5.1 setup, or even not using a subwoofer. Uh, a lot of times in a bedroom I don't like using a subwoofer because you're specifically using it at night a lot of times and um, it just doesn't make sense sometimes to have the subwoofer, or at least to have the subwoofer and to turn them off. Um, but when setting up a surround sound receiver, one of the most important factors is knowing where the speakers are going to be. If the speakers aren't in the right place, you're not going to hear things properly, and it's not going to be a true, you know, good surround sound system. Um, so setting up the speakers takes some time. Setting up everything takes some time, but more or less, it's the cabling. And I want to just say this really quickly. What I've done here is actually drill a hole, um, and I made a video doing it, but I haven't posted it and probably won't post it unless people want to see for a while. But if you notice right here, I drilled a hole into my uh, living room floor. And if you don't own the property, you can't do this. Uh, so apartment owners who live in a duplex or a flat um, or uh, share a house with somebody, you know, you, you just can't do this. Um, but I did it, and I ran the wires, you know, neatly packing the basement portion of the house here and then run them under and then have them coming up. Um, so, but that's, that can be very difficult to do. Uh, and a lot of people normally are going to actually get a faceplate where they put it into the wall and they integrate the wires into the wall, especially in a dedicated home theater. The last thing you want to see is wires running all over the place. So let me just say this. Um, Wires are one of the, you know, wires and cables are one of the most important aspects, um, but most of your home theaters are going to have 
jacks, you know, dedicated wall plates where the speaker wire is going into, HDMI cables, RCA cables, digital or analog cables are going into, um, and it integrates it nicely into the wall. I've got an array of a uh, few cables out here I've had a chance to kind of go through, but uh, let me just quickly explain that um, what I've done here, and I don't think a lot of people know this, what I've done here recently is set things up in sort of a mock setup, uh, a temporary setup in, in efforts to choose what devices, products, cables, wires, um, what things to put in the dedicated home theater, what I like best, what I don't like, what I have to buy in the future here, what I need when I don't need. Um, it's all in, in lieu or in effort of trying to figure out what's going to go in the dedicated home theater at some point. Um, and while I've made certain determinations, uh, I've also decided that some, you know, some of the things aren't worth it. Um, let me just run quickly through some of the things that I are guaranteed keeps or investments of mine that I'm really, really glad I made. Number one is Blu-ray player or uh, Ultra HD 4K Blu-ray player, and that is definitely the Oppo UDP 203. While I don't utilize it um, in this room much at all, it's one of the best things I'm, I'm definitely glad I bought for, for playing any type of media. Uh, not streaming, but for 4K Ultra HDs or even Blu-rays, even DVDs. It upscales up, converts everything to 4K. Uh, second of all, I'd have to say the receiver. The receiver was one of the biggest investments. You know, $2,000 for a stereo is not cheap. And um, I'm going to have a video actually devoted to this receiver and receivers in general, where I run through receivers, talk about them, how much I've paid for them, and uh, what their job is, more or less. But the receiver from Marantz, the SR7010, was probably the biggest investment I've made and probably the best I could have done. Um, and keep in mind, all of this I was trying to do on a budget. Um, I didn't have an absorbent amount of money. I didn't have a million dollars just to spend on all this stuff. And uh, so I had to make the best choices. I had to choose what was right for me. And it's unfortunate because before I'd ended up buying the SR7010 from Listen Up Audio out of Denver, Colorado, uh, I actually had a chance to buy several other receivers and wasn't satisfied or happy with them and returned them. Uh, one of them being the 6009 from Marantz, the 5010, and another Pioneer. Um, well, I ended up staying with the SC97 for another room. The SR7010 was my favorite, and the reason that is because it does the Dolby Atmos, the DTSX, got 125 watts RMS per channel but it's clean power, uh, it sounded the most unique, the best out of them, and it does the best video processing, in my opinion. Um, it's got the 4K upsc you know, upscaling and pass-through, uh, so any source you put into it via HDMI is going to be 4K. And um, that brings us to the third most important factor, and that's the television, the Sony um, 4K Ultra HD television with high dynamic range. While it doesn't have Dolby Vision, I'm certainly glad I bought that. Uh, but I'll address that in other videos down the road. But the other thing, and I'm not really focusing on the speakers too much, but the power amplifier. The Emotiva power amplifier I chose, the A300, has proven to be one of the most effective products in the home theater. Um, and I know I said I'm going to pass up speakers, but I'm just going to say this, that the SVS Prime Towers and Prime 5.1 family that I bought, including center channel matching surround speakers, um, that was a damn good investment. And I ran through a lot of speakers as well. Yes, I tried the Elax. Um, I was going to go with the Kef Q500 Towers. But I decided to go with these SVSs because of one being the piano gloss. Uh, one downside to them was they didn't have um, four binding posts in the back, meaning that you couldn't buy wire or buy amplify them. That was a big uh, thought process in my decision. However, with an amplifier like the Emotiva, it doesn't even offer four terminals. So you're on, you know, the Emotiva things, you're not really even able to buy amp. However, you know, when you step into the XPA line or the X series line of Palmer amps, then you get into being able to buy amp and buy wire. Um, but the speakers are one of the main things. And I'm going to set this guy up for you on camera, but um, I just want to say that the home theater stuff I've invested in, I really tried to buy things at, you know, while well, paying close attention to what I'm spending and making sure that it's useful and needing it. Um, headphones came into play too. I use the headphones a lot. A lot of times when um, I am laying in bed with the female late at night and uh, she you know, wants to go to sleep and I'm not uh, tired enough, um, 
hey, it, it, it really comes in handy when you can throw on a pair of headphones and sit back and watch the TV and uh, get a you know cinematic type of experience with uh, headphones on. And quality headphones are, are determining that factor. And the PSB M4U2s, uh, really were my favorite, absolute favorites. Um, and keep in mind, I'm going to do a look back video at the year mark exactly when I started making my first YouTube video ever. Um, I'm going to do, on, on, you know, on that date this year, 2017, I'm going to do a look back video on everything I've bought and at least put it on YouTube. Um, what I think of it, how it works, and if I would buy it again. I mean, that's been a lot of products, guys, believe me. And I haven't even posted um, most of the products I've gotten. But setting up a surround sound receiver is where we're at in this video. And um, it's important. It's important to know how to do it. While it's not difficult, it's not the easiest thing to do. And like I mentioned in the you know beginning of the video here, it's the cabling, the management. Um, while a dedicated theater is going to have them integrated into the wall and nicely tucked behind the uh, either the screen, the projection screen, or if you've got a uh, AV type of cabinet like this or a TV stand of some sort, um, and you're not going to put them behind the wall. To be honest with you, I had a mock set up here, guys. Uh, that you know, it was temporary use, determining what things I was going to keep and what I wasn't, what I was going to go with for cables and speaker wires and all that. And uh, while I've made some decisions, um, I'm not going to go all out and use the best of my products in this video because I still want to uh, try to determine if things are going to basically outdo other things. So. I'm not using all of my good speaker wire to do this, and one of the reasons being, well, for surround speakers, it doesn't make sense to use high-dollar, fancy speaker wires that are 10 feet, because you got to have them looking nice, and you can't have speaker wire running through the, you know, right over the floor or on the carpet or on the rug uh, directly, and 10 feet's not going to do you any good anyway. So that's why I'm going to stick with these kind of cables. In my opinion, yes, they're not the best, um, but they'll do for now and that's why i've been trying to compare them to other ones uh, other higher end ones and stuff but what does make a difference in my opinion um speaker cables yes big difference but what makes the biggest or largest difference in the things you can't skimp on are certainly the hdmi cable so anything for your video Nowadays, with the 4K Ultra HD stuff with the high dynamic range, you really need to pay attention to the video cables you're using, and audio cables as well. And while receivers and pre-pro processors type deal, or surround processors, um, a lot of them use XLR balanced connections to send audio signals out into a power amplifier or amplifier of the sort, um, we're stuck to analog connections. They don't offer a digital way to send a audio signal um, directly out to a power amplifier or an amp. So that means RCA cables, um, unless you're going balanced. And even if you're going balanced, keep in mind that's still an analog connection. Um, but RCA cables do make a big difference, especially if you're sending a signal to a power amp or using them for, um, you know, source interconnects. Um, so connecting source material to a receiver or an amplifier, they make a big difference. And let me just quickly tell you, I'll, I'll, I will do a video on uh, cables and whatnot, and I've got a few on the hard drive I haven't posted yet, going through almost every cable I own. But um, the RCA cables, what they do if they're of poor quality, and I've got a pair of mid-grade quality ones here, not low quality, but uh, they're the red and the white ones, the left and the right cable. And... Um, if they're of low quality, you will hear 60 hertz hum or hiss or distortion in your speakers. You, you might even hear it coming from the amp itself, but if it's coming from the amp itself, it's not due to these. It's due to a, a power problem you've got or a grounding issue. But the RCA cables do make a big difference um, with the level of distortion. So with that being said, the video and audio cables, HDMI. Uh, back in the day, and I used to do this, I used to send a video signal out directly from the source into my TV with HDMI. Then what I would do is I would separate the audio signal um, and use a optical, specifically an optical. I wouldn't use many digital coax cables, so I bought more of the expensive AudioQuest optical cables in the past. I'd send an audio um, signal out of the source material into the receiver directly that way. Um, and the day of doing that's kind of done. And the reason is, is because you want to keep a good, really good, high quality HDMI cable as your one audio and video signal. Um, the reason is, is because all the newer sources of surround sound, formats of surround sound and whatnot, are using HDMI. And you've got to use an HDMI to be able to do that. So that's why we want a solid HDMI cable being our 
audio and video method. Um, so I'm going to be using all HDMI cables from all my source material, Blu-ray player, uh, game console, PS4, cable box uh, to do this setup. But um, let's get started, guys. So obviously the first thing we've got to do to set up a surround sound receiver is figure out where it's going to go. And while it's best not to keep things in a closed cabinet, you want to keep things out if you can, but if you have to integrate things into your system and find space or you're limited on space, then by all means, put it in a cabinet type thing or something with some doors on it, but be sure to add fans or ventilation to it. So I'm going to place my receiver directly where I had it before. I kind of changed the table around a little bit, um, but I'm going to place it right where I did before. And um, I'm essentially going to connect all the cables from that point on. So choosing where you're going to put the receiver. And if you've got a processor type delay, you probably want to keep them close together so you can have interconnects going from the processor into the amplifier. Um, and then we'll connect our Emotiva as well. But uh, keep in mind, I've got my speaker wire basically connected. I just disconnected this side to rerun and clean all of the back of things there, um, sanitize it, wipe everything down, and... Um, you know, nicely hide the cables because I was getting real sick of the wires running through. I had actually wires running up along the trim like that and to the speakers. So believe it or not, I even had wires and cables going up over here and down. So while that's done long and gone, um, that looked like crap and the cables themselves are fine. So I'm sticking with the same cables for now. Later on, I'll do a video with all out my greatest things and we'll see if we notice a difference. But for now, I'm just gonna stick with these cables again. And uh, I'm definitely gonna be using the power amp for the Atmos DTSX type stuff. But yeah, figuring out where we're gonna put it. So we're gonna place our receiver down there and then we're gonna connect everything up and uh, see what we get. So with the placement of the receiver, what I'm trying to do, and everybody's going to be different here, I'm just trying to make things a flush line here. So I've got my tables coming out, and they're both the exact same table. It all came as a set, which is why I'm partial to the piano gloss stuff. But I'm trying to keep my tables kind of in line and flush with each other. While they're, they're the exact same tables, it's easy to kind of match them up and see where they kind of come out, you know. Um, you want the devices, or at least I want the devices kind of flush, so a straight line without actually getting out a ruler or yardstick from here. Uh, so it looks like i got to push the Marantz in a little bit further, and um, yeah, but that's when we're done hooking everything up. We haven't started doing that yet, so... First thing we're going to do, though, is we're going to decide which source we're going to plug in first. We're going to leave speakers and power till the end. Um, and also keep in mind, guys, I am choosing to use an aftermarket um, nice audio quest. I believe it's an NRG X, yeah, NRG X power supply. While you don't have to do this, I have found in the past that it does increase quality. Not only that, but aesthetic appearance wise as well. And also, I've tried to match my cabling up from audio quest at least, speakers, subs, um, with the blue more or less. So I hope I've done a good job of that, but I'm not going to use all my nice, fancy AudioQuest cables at this point. I'm just going to use the nicer HDMI ones. Um, so first is source material. Well, you know, source material. We want to hook up our source material. Um, and while I do have all the speaker labeling that came with the receiver, like surround left, surround back left, um, you know, front height and all that, um, we're not going to put that on just yet. I'll actually do that in the later video where I set everything up with my better stuff. Um, but for now, we're just going to kind of keep things simple and set up our source material. So first thing we want to do is decide what we're going to plug in first. And I think that's going to be the cable box. So we're going to go ahead and I've actually got a audio quest chocolate connected to the back of my cable box. So you're going to want to plug your HDMI cable into that first. Um, and these are directional, so we're going to choose, you know, the direction going into the receiver. Obviously, it's coming out of the cable box. So um, we've got a chocolate coming out of the cable box, which means we're going to put that chocolate into the receiver into the proper corresponding input. This one's obviously going to be cable set. So let me come around here. I'm going to pop off my little cover off my HDMI cable right here. Just going to set it down for the time being. But I'm going to find the corresponding input, and I'm going to put that in there. Careful not to bend your cables too much, because uh, if you bend some of these, especially the higher price HDMI cables, uh, they might never be the same again. So I'm just going to find my cable sat here. I'm going to make sure I've got the direction or the shape of the HDMI plug in the proper, uh, you know, proper side, and I'm just going to push it on in. 
That way we've got it going into the right direction. It's going in there, as you can see, and then everything else, audio and video, is going to be coming out of our monitor. All right. Next thing we want to do is pick out our next source. And for right now, I'm not using the Oppo. I'm making things easy for setting stuff up and whatnot. I'm going to be using a Pioneer Elite BDP 05 FD Blu-ray player. It's not the best one I've got. Certainly not the worst. It's great for CD audio listening. Uh, but for now, it's got a resolution button I can actually change so I can flip through projector and whatnot, 1080p sources, and I can hit that manually or by remote. So it works out great for our testing purposes for this video. So if you can come around here and see, actually, um, believe it or not, I've got the exact same HDMI cable leaving the um, Blu-ray player as I do the cable box. It's going to be an AudioQuest chocolate, as we can see here. And that's directional. So we've got it leaving the Blu-ray player going out. We want that going in to the receiver. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our HDMI cable. We're going to get it untangled, make sure it's, it's cleanly making a connection in the back there, not screwing stuff up. And I've got this stuff kind of out here for that reason. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pop off the connector that down, and I'm going to plug him into the corresponding input. Uh, this one's going to be Blu-ray. So I'm going to turn him around and make sure not to twist the cable too much once again. And I'm going to plug him in Blu-ray. So you just want to find your Blu-ray input, which is going to be right here. Um, I'm actually going to use DVD this time because I, pres I reserve the Blu-ray port for Mr. Oppo UDP. 203. Uh, at the end, we'll do this, and I might even separate it into another video, which I probably will, but we're actually, we'll tie all the cables together at the end here so they look nice and neat uh, in the back of the system so they're not all hanging down like I had in previous videos, uh, all separately going every which way and what. So, okay, we've got two source materials connected. Our third one looks like it's going to have to be our PlayStation 4. We've got a PlayStation 4 down there, as you can see, it's kind of diagonal slanted right now, but Got a PS4 here. We're going to go ahead and pick um, our nicest HDMI cable for that one since we're using most, mostly the PlayStation 4 to run Blu-rays lately and gaming. And while we have high dynamic range on that thing, I'm going to use a higher end um, AudioQuest Vodka cable than I am the other sources. Um, but we will replace some other HDMI cables, like specifically the Apple I run with a Vodka cable too. Um, the 4K stuff. Specifically with Ethernet 2, I run with the vodka cables because they're a little bit higher quality than the other uh, chocolate line and carbon line. So, But keep in mind, too, the price of HDMI cables is going to highly uh, go up with the length of the cable, too. So I'm going to be careful. Take the end cap off of this one. It's a nice. It's got like 10% actual silver content in this cable. So very nice cable. You can tell it's been used previously. I've used it for the PlayStation 4. I, it works great. It's nice and short. So you can see here, very nice and short. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Now we're going to make sure the direction's proper. So looks like this is leaving, going out. So we're going to connect this one into the player or source material, in this case being PlayStation 4. I'm just going to go around here and I'm going to get the back of my PS4 out and plug this guy in. So I know it's a little hard to see, but we connected up the vodka cable HDMI going out of the PlayStation 4. And we're going to nicely snake that cable around with the end cap on the end of this one, mind you, for the time being. Uh, we're just going to nicely snake it on the back here and make sure we've got a good run to the back of the receiver. I'm going to kind of just leave it up here for the time being so I can grab it nicely from around here. When we're done, we're going to set all of our HDMI end caps aside and at a place where we know we can get them in the future. So th same thing as before, guys. We're just going to grab our HDMI cable. We're going to take our end caps off. Boom. Set that aside and then put this as well into the corresponding input. This input's going to be game, technically. So all we're going to do is we're going to make sure we put this one, and I'm going to turn it around here you guys to see game so we're going to put this one into the proper input game all right looks like we've got those all properly going in 
Uh, the next thing we need to do, last but not least, since those are the only source materials I'm going to be running for this video or this hookup video or installation, uh, last thing is going to be monitor out. And as I said before, you want to pick a good uh, quality, very high quality HDMI cable when you're running the 4K uh, Adobe Atmos stuff, anything in the audio return channel, and anything that's going to be running an Ethernet connection or streaming stuff. Uh, and our TV is definitely capable of doing that, and it's capable of doing the high dynamic range, passing that through the receiver, then passing it, you know, garbling it up and sending the signal back out of the TV. So, we want to pick the highest quality HDMI cable we can. While the Vodka series is nice, um, it's a little expensive. It gets like up to about seven, eight hundred bucks when you choose more than about four to five feet. Um, we've got a little bit more length than that required. From the receiver to the back of the TV, unfortunately our HDMI inputs are over here on the TV. Let's turn around and show you here. Um, and we're looking specifically for a audio return channel, something that says ARC, A-R-C. And as you can see, it's a little bit hidden by the cable itself right there. But yeah, you can kind of see there. Audio return channel. So we're going into the TV currently with an a with an AudioQuest Carbon HDMI. Looks like we've got that in the you know proper direction going into the TV. We just need to find the other end of it over here and put it into the monitor out section. So it looks like we've got our carbon sitting right here. And we're gonna go ahead and snake it on up to the back of the receiver as well as we can get it and plug it into the corresponding input. So this table kind of makes things easy for me because it's got these uh, branches, you know, whatever. Um, so I kind of snake the things up there, let, let them sit there, go from around the back here. I'm not going to turn the receiver around. A lot of people like to turn it around, but when they do that, they're adding extra throw or run to the cables that when they spin the receiver back around then, uh, they're going to have to fish around with it or tie them together at a later point. And um, I'm kind of making it easier. It's all set up here for me to do that at the end here to kind of all tie them together as one piece. Um, I'm not going to use anything expensive. I'm just going to use some, looks like Anthem Cables uh, Velcro type deal. And while we're going to get our, got our carbon over here, that's just going to go in the corresponding input as well. So when I turn you around, we're going to be looking for our main audio return channel out. And while all of these are capable of doing the 4K Ultra HD high dynamic range output, uh, we're going to want to find our audio return channel. It's going to take off a little piece, a little uh, end cap on our HDMI cable. We've got it going out. So that's the only one going out is the one we're actually doing TV. And I'm going to plug it into the audio return channels. This is going to feed all of our video. All right, that's looking good, guys. So as you can see, some of the HDMI cables are a little bit thicker, and I think some of that's determined by length from AudioQuest. Uh, the Vodka and the Carbon series are nice and thick. The Chocolate series aren't as thick. Keep in mind, we're not running 4K high dynamic range through the Chocolates, just the Vodka and Carbon series. Okay, looks like it's going to be easy to take all four of these HDMI cables and kind of get them to go like that and then we will uh, tie them up soon. So while that's looking good, doesn't look like we'll be able to see that kind of from the top of the receiver. Um, the next thing is speakers and then we're going to do, um, actually you know what, I'm going to do RCA first to the power amplifier. So I'm running an Emotiva power amplifier for the time being. It's going to be driving, whoops, got a little hair there. I know I wiped this down with a brand new microfiber rig recently, but it just transfers around more dust sometimes. So I need to wipe everything down once I'm done here, but um, I'm running a power um, amplifier at this time for my front left and right speakers, for the tower speakers. Since those are the most important speakers in any system, whether it be 9.1, 11.2, 7.2.4 uh, like we're running here, or 5.1, the front left and rights are certainly the most um, required. They get the more you know, the most use out of them. So in this case here, we're going to run the two front towers from a power amplifier. In later videos, I'll actually add another power amplifier, uh, most likely a five or, a, um, you know, a five or two two channels and then another five at some point. So we'll power amplify all speakers at some point in my videos, guys, but um, possibly not in this room. I might have to wait till the dedicated home theater to do that. So it's more or less funds available. So we're going to take a quality RCA cable. I'm not using the highest quality one I have, but it certainly does the 
you know, does the job. We've got an audio quest series here. They're directional as well. And you gotta make sure they're going into the power amp. So they're already connected to the back of the Emotiva here. And I'm gonna take the output, which is sending the signal out of this Marantz here, into the power amplifier. Now in this case, we gotta be specific. We have to actually go into the on-screen display or graphical user interface of the receiver and select the corresponding uh, pre-outs that we want determined, so the channels, but we've already done that, and I can do that for you again, guys. We'll set it up in a different video, but now I'm gonna be choosing, I'm looking for the pre-out section of my receiver to send alternate audio signals out into power amplifiers. Well, we got our 7.1 in there. Looks like we've located our pre-out section, as you can see right here. And it's kinda hard to see, but, yeah, I kinda get a better shot of it, guys. Yeah, I'm looking for where it says pre-out. I know I can see it, but it's hard for you guys to see it. Um, so, let me back up. So, right there, if you notice that pre-out, it lists every channel we got possible. Front, center, both subs, surround, surround back, front, wide, height one, and height two. In this case, we're going to be going into the front, left, and right. Um, so, I'm just going to take, I'm going to make sure I've got my left going to the proper one. So left right here, I'll plug that in and carefully mind you too. And then we're also gonna do right. Don't ever do any of this um, connecting or installing with any of the, of the devices turned on, specifically the amplifier. Do any of that stuff and you're gonna have major distortion and possibly damage uh, or manipulate any of your equipment. So we're gonna make sure we've got our HDMI end caps all placed in a spot where you know where they are. Looks like said, we've got our power amplifier audio signal chosen. The next thing we're gonna do is find subwoofers. Um, so, subwoofer cable. I'm just gonna start with the one for this video because it's as simple as connecting the RCA um, line input, you know, or output technically. But this one is a higher quality one from AudioQuest. It's a sub one. I'm not gonna be using the boxer just yet. Uh, it's a newer AudioQuest um, subwoofer cable I bought specifically for the SVS, but now we're going to go with my Velodyne 12-inch subwoofer, the DSP series, or DPS series. So I'm going to snake this guy up here so I can get to him from the back of the receiver and uh, go from there. He's also got a ground capability to him. It leaves uh, possible radio frequency interference and stuff out. So once again, guys, I just kind of snake my wires up to that little shelf there, kind of, and then makes it easy to kind of go back here and grab it and hook it up. So as I said before, this is a higher quality subwoofer cable from AudioQuest. It's got a ground capability to it to reduce any interference uh, and or 60 hertz hum, but it makes the connection more effective and higher quality. So I'm just going to take my subwoofer cable here. I'm going to find the exact same section as we were in before. We're going to choose subwoofer 1 in this. So I'm going to come over here. Come over here with me. Looking for that sub 1. Looks like we found it right there. It's a little hard to see in the video, but... Yeah, if you can kind of see it down there, the black ones. They're usually black, too. I'm going to connect this guy right on up. And then the second thing we're going to do is actually ground the subwoofer cable. Now keep in mind 